Hi, my name is Vivek Adhikari. I am your English instructor. In today's class, we are going to solve the grammar portion of Unit 1, that is, articles. So, let's begin. Alright, we are now going to study about the grammar topic called articles. Before doing that, let's study a couple of paragraphs. Here's a paragraph about a man called Gregory Dunham. Gregory Dunham is an intelligent engineer and he's from California. So let's study this paragraph and underline the articles. So let's start. Gregory Dunham is from California, a U.S. state on the Pacific Ocean. California has the largest population of all the states. Its largest city is Los Angeles and the capital is Scarmento. Dunham is an intelligent engineer. He is a motorcycle enthusiast. He built a huge bike. Now the question could be, what are articles? Now articles are the words like a and the, right? So these little things are called articles. So words like a, an and the are called articles, right? Now let's study about articles in detail. There are two kinds of articles and they can be divided like this. The first one is called definite article and the second one is called indefinite article. Indefinite article. So the first one is definite articles and the second one is indefinite articles. So what are definite articles? Are simply the definite article. So there's only one definite article so I'm going to write article not articles. So we have two indefinite articles so we use the plural form. So what the definite article is the or sometimes called the and the indefinite article is a or a and an right so these are the indefinite articles while the is the definite article so the words a an and the are called articles a and an are called indefinite articles and the is called the definite articles they are always followed by a noun, a noun phrase. So what's the idea? The idea is these little words are always followed by a noun phrase. So the a slash n is always followed by a noun or sometimes, or most of the times, noun most of the time, a noun phrase. So, articles are followed by a noun or a noun phrase. Let us look at some more examples. We we studied about it in, in the paragraph form, but now let's study simply by writing some of the sim simple sentences. He built a huge motorbike. He is an intelligent engineer. He built the monster motorbike. Monster motorbike means big, you know, big motorcycle, something like that, like a monster. His motorcycle is the biggest one in the world. So we have four different examples. The first two shows the use of indefinite articles, while the second and the last two, they show the use of the definite article. So we have an article and it is followed by a noun phrase. We have the article and it is followed by again the noun phrase, right? The biggest one in the world. So that is the whole idea. Another idea could be why, you know, a and an are used in the first two examples and why the word the is used in the second example. So this could be another idea, another interesting idea. It is because when we talk about a huge motorbike, using the word a huge motorbike, we are generally referring to any kind of motorbike. It does not mean a particular motorbike. He built a huge motorbike, you know, any mot mot kind of motorbike. Though. So out of any motorbike, it could be one. So when we say a sentence like he is an intelligent engineer, what that means is out of many intelligent engineers, he is one. So he's not that special in a, in a grammatical sense. He could be special uh, in real life, but... In a grammatical sense, we are talking about, you know, a single person out of many, right? So he's an intelligent engineer. What that means is out of many engineers, he is one or any ordinary intelligent engineer. We are talking grammatically, of course. In the second part of the example, we are being specific. When we talk about uh, 
he built the monster motorbike now monster motorbike is really special isn't you know no one in the world has created a motorbike as big as dunham has created because it's really huge you know it's 6.2 meters in length it weighs around 2948 kilograms and it stands 3.4 meter tall and it's you know it's it speeds up to 104 kilometers an hour so it's really a monster motorbike because it looks like a monster literally we are talking metaphorically of course but it looks like a monster that's why we use the word the noun phrase monster motorbike and if you look at the second example you will see we use the because we are you know it is followed by a superlative adjective so we are talking about the three different forms of adjectives they are normal comparative and superlative since we have a superlative uh, adjective in the noun phrase we use the article the so his motorcycle is the biggest one in the world so the world again because what there is only one world and that is the planet earth so this motorbike is the biggest one no one has ever created another kind of motorbike which is as big as dunham's right and the world there's only one world right now the grammar idea is the articles are followed by noun phrase so use motorbike is a noun phrase i'm writing np for that intelligent engineer is a noun phrase i'm writing np for that so monster motorbike is also a noun phrase while the biggest one in the world it's longer but it is also a noun phrase what's a noun phrase noun phrase is a combination of words a group of words that act like a noun what does that mean? So, Hughes motorbike. We have an adjective. We have a noun. So, this you know these two words are called noun phrase because Hughes motorbike altogether is acting as a noun. The simplest form of grammar rule that decides the use of articles is the sound. Now we are talking about the sound. How many kinds of sounds are there? There are in fact two kinds of sounds. The first one is called vowel sounds and the second one is called consonant sounds. So we have two different sounds. The first one is vowel sounds and the second one is called consonant sounds. So if you took a word like apple, we have a kind of a sound, right? Something so it has an a sound, apple. So it's a vowel sound because it it has this diphthong, a diphthong, correct? But if you look, look at another word, book. Now it has this ba sound, book. If you write the phonetic transcription, it would be book. Or this can be written as o, right? Book. You can write it like this also, book. So the, the second one is American. This one is American system. This is the British system. So there are two systems of phonetic transcription. We don't need to go uh, study about this in detail, but we'll study about this later on. So the standard American system and the standard British system, right? This British received pronunciation. So there are two different kind of phonetic transcriptions. So my point is the word ba, the word book has a ba sound while the word apple has an a sound. Let us look at more examples. The word ox has a sound, right? A sound while the word hat has a ha sound that is why we prefer using an apple an ox while we use a book or hat if we are talking about specific apple we may say the apple sometimes the apple is rotten or we can say the ox has lost his mind no <laughs> the ox is plowing the field or we can say the book that I like the most is Harry Potter or the hat which I brought from Canada is really cool now the can be the and the it can either be so it can either be the or the so if it's followed by a consonant sound it would be the like the pot the mat the ticket and if it's followed by a vowel sound it would be the it will be the like the axe the ox the umbrella right an aw and an 
a is followed by a consonant sound consonant sound consonant sounding word well n is followed by a vowel sounding word so this is the basic grammar rule now let us study some more examples and it's very simple by the way let's do a quick review we studied about a paragraph and found out the articles and after the words we learned that there are two kinds of articles indefinite articles and the definite article and afterwards we talked something about the sound the vowel sounds and the consonant sound we didn't go into detail we didn't talk about long and short vowel the diphthong and you know triphthongs and all that we didn't even talk about the types of consonant sounds because that's not the motive here now we are going to study some examples and we will use i'm sure you will know how to use articles in proper places uh, there are so many rules i'm not going to write all the rules i'm just going to give you some examples all right here are four examples let's go one by one robin has a cat and a dog so any cat and any dog not not particular dog we are not talking about a fixed labrador or, or a japanese pitch we are not even talking about the types of cats so any kind of cat and a dog so robin has a cat and a dog right one cat and one dog the dog that is sleeping outside is mine right so we are referring to a particular kind of dog so we use the dog that is sleeping outside and then we have another clause that clause right so this in the second example the dog is not any kind of dog but this is a particular dog water is good for health we do not use the definite article here we don't say the water is good for health because you cannot count the water you know these articles are always used before countable nouns so there has to be a countable noun so what's a countable noun any kind of noun that can be counted you know in fingers like stars you can count stars actually so it could be books it could be hats or cats it cannot be water mineral you know love hatred you cannot count hatred you don't say a kilo of hatred or something like that it's an abstract noun by the way so water is good for health we, since we cannot count water we are you know removing the article and it is called the omission the omission of articles so sometimes it is called zero articles right it is also called zero articles we are not using an article so we you call it simply a zero article the water in the bottle is dirty now we are referring to a particular kind of uh, kind of water you know, the water which water the water that is in the bottle is dirty now since the water is being specific in this case we use the definite article the right simple as that let's look at another example a lady came with a cat in the park a dog chased the cat and the lady chased the dog away let's study this example a lady it could be any 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 lady not a fixed lady you know any lady we are referring to any kind of general this is generalization so we are talking about any kind of lady a lady came with a cat so any kind of cat does not matter what cat right in the park now the park is this is specific park it could be un park it could be the garden of dreams it could be anywhere you know nice place where you can sit with a cat so the park we are talking about a specific park a dog chased the cat now look how a cat became the cat and the lady now a lady became the lady chased the dog away now a dog became the dog right so the whole point is this is first mention this is also first mention i'm simply writing fm is not frequency modulation or something like that right first mention for second mention i'm writing second mention second mention i'm writing sm second mention now the point is the whole idea of this is in first mention we use indefinite articles while in the second mention we use definite articles so this is another trick for you know learning the knack of using articles if you want to have a knack for using articles you know many people do not know the uses of articles they just memorize the rules they go on memorizing like 40 50 60 rules and in the end they all you know blow the rules away my the point is if you want to be fluent with using articles you have to practice you have to you know learn you have to be 
and specific, you have to be careful where to use articles and where to leave the articles. And let's say you're talking about a lady and you're talking about a cat for the first time and you will certainly use the indefinite articles. But if you, if you go on repeating, you know, if you go on talking about the same lady and the same dog and the same cat, so in the second mention, you're going to use definite articles because the indefinite things are now turned into definite things. This is what we call the shift in articles. Shift in articles. Or oftentimes it is also called measuring def definitiveness. Measuring definiteness. So how definite a thing is, that is the question. So we are measuring the definiteness, right? So if I say something like the tallest girl in the class is six feet tall. So we are referring to a particular kind of girl, right? So if I say something like, please read the second chapter in this book. So there can be only one second chapter. There cannot be two second chapters. All right. If you ask a question like, can I use the camera? Uh, now, there is a certain sense of definitiveness between the speaker and the listener, and they know which camera, you know, the speaker is talking about. The listener knows which camera the speaker is talking about. If you say something like, I saw a cat in the park, this could mean, you know, you saw any kind of cat, does not matter. But if you say, I saw the cat with long black stripes, and he was black and white, could be a definite cat. So this is the general you know, rule for finding out which article to use. And it's, it's really significant, right? You should know this rule. Let us now talk a bit about zero articles. You see the whole article of all the rules cannot be covered in a single class. And I'm just beating around the bush. I'm just giving you the general idea. You get the picture, right? So we talked a bit about the indefinite articles. We talked a bit about the definite article. Then we learned about some sound. Then we went on reading about some omission of article. Now we are on zero articles, zero articles now. Now the whole point of this class is to make you familiar with the uses of articles. Is to make you comfortable when you use the articles the next time. Right? You get the picture, right? Good. Let's talk about zero articles. Now, it is a short paragraph. Now, I'm going to demonstrate you zero articles. Zero articles are also referred as removal of articles. It is the place where we remove articles and we do not use it. The, here's a short paragraph. I love playing football. No, the football. Uh, the football, sorry, not the football. Come over Monday, come over the Monday, no Monday. Before afternoon also we don't use articles and we'll play football. Not something like we'll play the football. Do you know how to play the football? No, no the football. Do you know how to play football? No, it's all right. We'll go to Ratna Park, not we'll go to the Ratna Park or something and play on Saturday, not on the Saturday, right? So, we are cutting out all the articles. One thing you can do is you can actually write a paragraph without using any articles at all. Then you can write a paragraph using as many articles as possible. Then you'll see, you know, there's a significant amount of difference. I mean, surely the meaning is not changed. I'm not saying something like the meaning will be changed and your sentences will become something else. No. My point is, if you use too many articles, your paragraph will, would sound a bit how do you say it, a bit, you know, clumsy. And if you do not use any articles, your paragraph would be like lame. People would question, you know, what is wrong with your paragraph if you do not use any articles. So the point is, we can sometimes remove the articles and removing the articles is what we call zero articles. Removing the articles wherever unnecessary. Removing the articles. The point is we are removing the articles like there's no need of article before games or sports, no need of articles before days, no need of articles before places, you know, parks and streets and falls, 
no, no use of article before days and months. So we did that. All right, with this, we have come to the end of today's class. Now, I'm going to give you some homework as usual. Your homework is fill in the blanks. Now, that's your homework, very easy one. You need to fill in these blanks using the words like a, an, or the. Sometimes even you can use the zero article, but that means is you can use no article. So we have four choices. What are the first four choices? The first one is a, the second one is and, the third one is the, and the last one is no articles. So these are five questions. Fill in the blanks. With this, we have come to end of today's class. If you have any questions or suggestions regarding this video series, feel free to write us at learning at .edu .np. Thank you.